This is being it. Britain News Now is made possible by the generous support of C Spire, Capital Ortho, Salamukis Madison, I Group, Blue Sky Landscaping and Maintenance, and these fine sponsors. This week on the show, the varsity and junior varsity cheer squads won a state competition last weekend. Sandra's Spring Musical is set with a big announcement this week. Thanksgiving is next week, and cooler weather is on the way. Weather, sports, and all the news are next. Brew News Now for Friday, November 22nd, 2024 begins right now. From the BNN headquarters on the campus of St. Joseph Catholic School in Madison, this is Mississippi's number one high school news leader, the award-winning student-produced weekly newscast, Bruin News Now. Happy Friday, Bruins. I'm Sophia Liberto. And I'm Mackenzie Cummings. Welcome to this Friday's edition of Bruin News Now. It's been a busy week for us Bruins. That's right, Mackenzie. This past weekend, both the JV and Varsity Bruin cheerleaders brought home gold trophies after competing in the Deep South Spirit Spirit Mania competition. That was a huge deal, and it came just weeks after the Bruin Varsity Cheerleaders won the state championship in the Mid-South Association of Independent Schools Statewide Spirit Competition. We'll have more on the cheerleaders' big wins later in the sports segment. For now, let's turn our attention to the Fine Arts Department, where two weeks ago, students successfully staged Antigone to great reviews. With that production now done, attention turns to the annual spring musical set for the Fine Arts Theater on Thursday, April 10th through Sunday, April 13th. The big reveal took place this week. And to say students are excited is an understatement. BNN's Landry Irwin has more. Twice a year, the St. Joe Theater Department stages two exciting events, the fall play and the spring musical. St. Joe students just put the fall play, Antigone, to the stage, and now preparations for the spring musical are underway. Throughout the week, student actors have been pulling names off a poster during announcements leading up to the final reveal of the musical on Thursday. This school year, St. Joe will stage the musical Grease. This is a romance musical taking place in the 1950s. The setting takes place at Rydell High School and other teen hangout spots. It is full of leather jackets and pink ladies and stars characters Danny Zuko and Sandy Olsen. So the spring musical that we picked for this year is Grease. I'm super excited about it. Um, we are going to explore that 1950s time period um, and have lots of cool technical elements. So it's going to be a super great show. Uh, show dates are Thursday, April 10th. Friday, April 11th. Both of those shows are going to be at 7 p.m. And then we will finish our run Saturday, April 12th, and we will have two shows that day, 2 p.m. and 7 p.m. So four shows all together, four opportunities to see it. Theater teacher Miss Harkins plans on making this year's musical even better than last year's production of All Shook Up. Student actors plan on working hard to make this production amazing. I think that Grace will be like way more energetic than last year's musical and like the cast and crew are gonna have like so much fun with it and it's gonna be way bigger and better and energetic. There was an interest meeting on Thursday for students interested in participating. This includes light crew, backstage crew, costume crew, actors, and so much more. If you are still interested in getting involved, it is not too late. Um, you can come see me and get a packet. If you are interested in being in the show as an actor, you will have to audition. Those auditions are Monday, December 9th after school, and then we'll have a dance call December 11th after school as well. If you're interested in joining a crew, you can um, get the paperwork, talk to me about what crew assignment interests you, and then I can help you get involved that way. It looks like St. Joe's right on track to put on another amazing production. I'm Landry Irwin for BNN. Thanks, Landry. The spring 2024 production of All Shook Up was a blast. I know I can't wait to see what our student performers can do with the spring 2025 musical. On a more somber note, but staying with the Fine Arts Theater, the St. Joe community gathered at 9.15 a.m. Thursday for the third annual Living Rosary to usher in the Thanksgiving season. Middle school students, along with Miss Megan Westbrook and Sherry White, the middle school religion teachers, organized their students in the Living Rosary as the St. Joe community united in prayer. The Living Rosary took place of weekly mass this week. So why we have the Living Rosary is to kind of pray the Rosary in a different way and in a different light. Um, 
because the rosary sometimes can be you know boring if you're a teenager so we we tried to make it more of you know lively and have the people be the beats thanksgiving is thursday and saint joe will be closed monday november 25th through friday november 29th classes will resume at 8 a.m monday december 2nd a d-day at that point students will have two full weeks of classroom instruction followed by a week of semester exams and then christmas break the only school related activities during thanksgiving break are two nights of varsity basketball when the boys and girls teams hit the road tonight and monday Semester exams begin Tuesday, December 17th, and then Thursday, December 19th for the middle school students, and Friday, December 20th for high school students. All student accounts must be current by December 17th. In order for students to take semester exams, that includes tuition, incidentals, cafeteria balances, and library fees and charges. For a complete schedule of exams, consult the Parent Student Handbook found on the school website, www.stjoebruins.com. So when you start your morning Joe with your cup of coffee, it does rack up. So y'all get all that paid so that we can have exams successfully. Today is progress report day, the final progress report for the second academic quarter. Parents can expect an email later today with the current up-to-date grades for students as they head into Thanksgiving week and the final two weeks of the quarter. If student grades aren't where they want them to be, they have two weeks left to make sure all assignments and work is up-to-date before final exams. Coming up, we have your weekend weather forecast. And sports gives us an update on Bruin Athletics. Don't go away, sports and weather are next. What's up Bruins? I'm Addison Russell and I'm Elizabeth Vanderloo. It's time for some Bruin Sports because this is the Bruin, Bruin News Now Sports Report. Report. Bruin cheered tops this week in sports with a huge story. Weeks after winning the state championship for the Mid-South Association of Independent Schools statewide spirit competition, the Bruin cheer squad did it again. This time, the cheer team took home the top prize. Yes, you heard me right, first place, in the Deep South Spirit Mania competition this past weekend in Jackson. And it wasn't just the varsity cheer. The JV cheer team took home the pr top prize. Also, two first place finishes for the Bruin cheerleaders, a huge accomplishment for a small school. That's right, Addison. The JV and varsity cheerleaders have worked so hard to achieve this accomplishment. BNN's Macon Ogburn was there and has more on this report. This past Sunday, the Bruins brought home two more wins to wrap up a successful competition season. They competed at the Deep South Spirit Competition, which was held at the Mississippi Coliseum in Jackson. Deep South Spirit is a nationwide competition held multiple times a year in various cities around the U.S. Now, this competition is different from the NAIS competition in many ways, the biggest being it is mainly an all-star competition, but also features other competitors like public school teams and collegiate teams. Both Bruins performed around 4 o'clock in the traditional, non-tumbling division and brought some much-needed energy to the floor. Then, it was time for awards. The girls started off with a dance party to get everyone pumped up and excited to see how they did. Their hard work all season paid off with both junior varsity team and varsity capturing first place in their respective divisions. Deep South awarded each team with medals and a banner. It was an amazing way to end an eventful season. The girls celebrated this monumental win with putting on their medals first, then awarding their coaches that have led them to this moment with their own medals. The girls look forward to next season and already have a few ideas to continue their success. Some of the girls on and off the team are taking technique classes and tumble classes at JAM and we're also going ahead and working on our elite skills so the next year our overall score can be higher. I'm here with our undefeated Bruin cheer team. Now their competition season may be over but look for them at basketball games and Christmas parades. I'm Megan Ogman for BNN. Thanks Megan. All that hard work by the cheerleaders paid off. And even though the football season, where the fans see the cheerleaders at work every Friday night is over, cheering doesn't stop. The cheerleaders also attend the Bruin basketball games in the gym to urge on Bruin basketball to victory. The cheer team seems to always be looking for ways to improve their performance. Speaking of basketball, the varsity girls and boys team return to action tonight on the road at Heritage Academy in Columbus. The games come after a busy week that saw the Lady Bruins defeat Riverfield Academy Tuesday. The boys were scheduled to play Riverfield, but the game was canceled, and Riverfield forfeited but both the boys and girls team hit the road for Thursday for a game against Hillcrest Academy. 
Tonight at Heritage Academy, tip-off for the girls game is at 6 p.m., followed by the boys game at 7.30. Working on defense, just being disciplined, uh, running our stuff right, and just been watching film, scouting them out. Uh, we have a star player, Declan Foley, he's looking to have a big game, you know, crash the boards. Just, he's a dog out there, so that's what we need him for. Also on Thursday, Varsity Boys Soccer finally opened its season after a couple of delays in the past two weeks. The boys hosted Lamar School at the Bill Rayfield Field, but they lost their game. The JV boys also played, but they won their game. Well, that's it for this week's edition of Bruin Sports. I'm Madison Russell. And I'm Elizabeth Vanderloo. Have a good Thanksgiving break, Bruins. What's up Bruins? I'm Jonathan Warnock here with your weekend weather forecast as well as a look ahead to Thanksgiving week. Are you ready for a week off? I know I am. And your Thanksgiving break should start off nice. It's definitely starting to get colder, so make sure you layer and prepare for cool temps. For today, look for a high of a chilly 58 degrees under sunny skies followed by an overnight low of 34 degrees. Almost freezing, but not quite. Sunset today is 4.58 p.m. For the rest of your weekend, you can expect much of the same. Some very chilly days, sunny skies, and no chance of rain, which is definitely something to give thanks for in spirit of the holiday. On Saturday, look for a high of 65 paired with a low of 40. Sunrise Saturday is 6.39 a.m. with sunset at 4.57 p.m. Finally, on Sunday, the high should be 74 with an overnight low of 59. Sunrise and sunset for Sunday will be the same as it was on Saturday, 6.39 a.m. and 4.57 p.m. Looking ahead to Thanksgiving week, temperatures will warm up a little Monday and then cool off into the 60s Tuesday through Friday. Look for a slight chance of rain on Thanksgiving Day. Overall, nice weather for Tom the Turkey's annual visit to deliver huge roasted turkeys to all the good little boys and girls. With all that said, I'd like to wish everyone a nice long break. Happy Thanksgiving. Hope that we all have some great feasts. Remember that the only tootle out at the table is gratitude. I'm Jonathan Warnock for Bruin News Now. Thanks guys. Now let's talk about how our Bruin students participated in the 2024 session of the Mississippi Youth Legislature. Youth Legislation is an annual three-day mock legislature in which high school students from across Mississippi meet to propose, debate, and vote for legislation. This event took place in the state capitol and the old capitol. I know many of the students from St. Joe who participated said it was the experience of a lifetime and that everyone should try it out at least once. BNN's Turner Brown was there and has this report. Debate, disagreement, democracy. Three things you likely think of when you imagine government today. Last week, a delegation of St. Joe students traveled to the Capitol to discover what really goes on in the process of creating new laws for our state. We, we did a really good job. We weren't in trouble at all. We had press, we had lobbyists, and actually the lobbyists got to work pretty closely with someone that I graduated from law school with, so that was pretty cool. The annual Mississippi Youth Legislator Conference is an event where delegations from high schools all over the state come together in the Capitol to replicate the real-life methods and procedures of a legislative session. Students fill all possible roles. Our very own Bruins had at least one delegate in each of these roles. They are fortunate to have much harsher laws against it. I my time. Majority of students played the role of legislator, serving as either a senator or representative and presenting their own unique bill or possible law to be debated and potentially passed by the other delegates. Legislators spend the conference debating and doing research in order to ensure their bill is passed. Uh, uh, youth Leg was very uh, helpful and showing what the legislative process is like and I got to go up and debate a bunch of bills. Other roles filled by St. Joe's students were media and lobbyists. Unlike legislators, lobbyists do not have their own bills and instead create a platform of bills they support that they would like to research and debate upon. Youth Leg was really fun this year. Um, I was a lobbyist so I was kind of important. I was able to help people with their bills and help revise them and so they were able to pass better because of me. St. Joe's students brought home awards in all categories of media, lobbyists, and legislators. The St. Joe's students who spent all of last weekend in these very halls acting as legislators 
might just be the future of Mississippi government. I'm Turner Brown for BNN. Thanks, Turner. It does sound like a great experience. One more thing before we go. Mark your calendars for Sunday, December 15th at 2 p.m. in the Fine Arts Theater for the annual Gifts of the Season Christmas Concert. Enjoy performances from our Bruin Band, Choir, and Spirit Steppers. That's it for this week's edition of the show. Make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe to the Bruin News Now channel on YouTube, where you will find this and an archive of all student-produced programming. Bruin News Now will return with a new episode on Friday, December 6th. Until then, look for What's Brewing at the Joe, our sports preview show, on Monday, December 2nd, and the BNN Midweek Pause on Wednesday, December 4th. I'm Mackenzie Kellings. And I'm Sophia Liberto. From all of us here at BNN, have a great weekend.